Hi, and welcome to Lost in a Wonderland. If this is your first time here, we are Scott and Jennifer. Together, we explore everything Florida, including all its theme parks, attractions, cruises, and more. If you like the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified every time we post a new video. Hey, what is up everybody? We're sitting on a park bench outside Hollywood Studios. We came here today because we had planned to come to Hollywood Studios, but we got here and we decided to shift course. We uh, dumped our reservations for Hollywood. We are heading over to Epcot, the pop-up pass holder store. Has some new merchandise. We want to go check it out. Yeah, some new Christmas shirts so, for pass holders. Yeah, so we're going to take the Skyliner back up here behind us take that to Epcot. We also are going to go over to the Beach Club today. Neither one of us have ever been to the Beach Club, so we're going to go over there explore that resort. It's always fun whenever we don't have an exact plan. That's right. <laughs> we just kind of go with it. We'll take you along for the ride. Let's go. All right, so we're walking over here to the Skyliner station. I, I know we haven't really done much on the Skyliner here on this channel. I know it's been covered pretty widely. We like the Skyliner. It's a really, really relaxing <laughs> ride. And believe it or not, even in the Florida heat, there's windows, and we'll show you when we get in there, that makes a really nice breeze through there. It's pretty, pretty comfortable. Yeah, I enjoy it. There we go, take it off. Ah, oh, the breeze. So inside the cabin, at the top of each set of windows, so you got your seat down here, and then there's two push out windows that you can sort of open and close, but obviously in the open position. And then it's on both sides. And then there's the door side over here, obviously. And then on the far side, there's also another one. And it is amazing how much air that pushes through these. So I would imagine that if you were stopped for a very long time, which we are now currently stopped, that it would probably start to get pretty warm in here. But as long as the gondola is moving, it stays pretty cool. And I say that we're stopped. We're not actually stopped. We're just at a very slow pace right now. And typically that's to put another gondola on the, the line for a uh, wheelchair or someone who needs a little extra time to get in and out. Also of note, under one of the seats is an emergency kit. Now we talked to a cast member another time as to what was in that kit. Pen, paper, water, disposable bag for those emergency situations. Maybe a glow stick or something for something, or a flashlight, or something something to produce light because it's not. Sure, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we could see if we can uh, get a clarification on that. But uh, it is under the seat um, of each gondola vehicle, so everybody is equipped. So if you did get stuck for quite a while, um, you wouldn't dehydrate. There is some water in there available. Okay, so we're off. So at the uh, Caribbean Beach Skyliner Station. So from here, you can transfer it to two separate lines. This one over here takes you to either Art of Animation and Pop Century. And then there's another one on this side that will take you first to the Riviera Resort and then on to Epcot. We're gonna jump on the Riviera Epcot line, which will take us uh, first through the, Ep the Riviera Station, which we can stay on because it'll make a turn there and then go on to Epcot. All right, now we're on the second line. So this was the Caribbean Beach to Riviera line. From there, you can get off at the Riviera or you can stay on the, the same gondola, make the turn, and it'll take you to Epcot. Yeah. You can sort of tell through the window there's a glare, but we're sort of making a turn 
uh, from one direction to another currently, and then this will take us on to Epcot. So the cool part about this section of uh, the ride between the Riviera Resort and Epcot is that you'll actually go through a turn building. So it's not an actual stop, but it, the Skyliner does need to make a 90 degree turn. off the Skyliner at the International Gateway. Behind us is the entrance to Epcot and then behind us even on this direction <laughs> is the Skyliner station and then where we're going is down this pathway yet behind us again. This one leads to the Beach Club, the Yacht Club, and the Boardwalk. So here we are at the Beach Club Beach which uh, is not very busy today. But across Crescent Lake, you can see Boardwalk, Swan, Dolphin, and the Yacht Club. The Beach Club is a 583 room resort, which has guest rooms and connected conference facilities. It's styled after the New England seaside at the turn of the century and the seashore theme is evident throughout. Beach Club is joined in the center with the Yacht Club. Together, they share Stormalong Bay transportation facilities. Next to the Beach Club are the Beach Club Villas, a Disney Vacation Club resort. The biggest advantage to staying at the Beach Club is its location. You will enter Epcot through its back entrance, International Gateway. The International Gateway also houses the Disney Skyliner Station. The Beach Club is a deluxe resort hotel and its prices are among the most expensive offered at Disney. If you'd really like to step up, they also have suites, junior suites, two bedroom suites, a Nantucket suite, the Newport Suite, and the Presidential Suite. Here's one of the smaller pools here at the Beach Club. Does not appear to be open currently. The Beach Club has quite a variety of restaurants including Beaches and Cream, the Beach Club Marketplace, Cape May Cafe, Martha's Vineyard, and Hurricane Hannah's Pool Bar. Standing in a courtyard, and this is how you can differentiate the DVC portion from the hotel portion. The DVC portion is, mm, what do you call it, the seafoam green? Yeah. And if we spin around through this courtyard, and then you'll see the hotel portion of the resort is just baby blue. Right over here is the solarium that we walked through a little bit earlier. And then through this door right over here is where the marketplace was. Here's the entrance to Cape May Cafe, which uh, is still not open, I don't believe, since the pandemic started. The Cape May Cafe is where you can come and have a huge seafood buffet. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We, do we have Martha's Vineyard, which is a little lounge. So also not open. Not sure if it is. Yeah, it looks like it's just not open. Outside this window is Stormalong Bay, or at least a portion of Stormalong Bay. Since we're not currently staying at the resort, I won't be able to go out there to the pool. But I can show, I can show you what I can see. Um, there's plenty of people out there uh, enjoying the pool today. 
There's the yacht club on that side. I storm along. And it just meanders around and around quite a ways. Play in different areas and then on the far side, it's concrete on this side and then it's beach on the other side so you can go stand, uh, go sit on uh, loungers on the beach side. Which is nice if you're a toes in the sand kind of person. And here we have beaches and cream. They have a to-go window. You get your ice cream. You got the beaches and cream soda shop. Uh, Jen and I have neither one of us ever eaten here. No. Uh, I've, I've actually made ADRs here several times and canceled them because I'm trying to not eat carbs and <laughs> ice this, cream. This place has lots of carbs, so we will make it here. Wow. I'll uh, continue to leave that on our to do list. Yes. So, this is the pier for the yacht club where you would normally catch the friendship boats. The friendship boats are not currently operating. Normally you could take the friendship boat from here and to Hollywood Studios. There are several around the lagoon. Maybe they're about to start using those again. The Yacht Club is a five-story, 630-room resort, slightly larger than its sister resort, the Beach Club. Located along the shore of Crescent Lake, opposite the Boardwalk Resort, themed after seaside New England hotels of the late 1800s, the Yacht Club has a stately nautical look and feel. Hardwood floors, brass accents enhance this feeling. The Yacht Club is within walking distance of Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, the Boardwalk, the Swan, and the Dolphin Hotels. The Yacht Club is considered a deluxe resort hotel and its prices are among the most expensive offered at Disney. If you're looking for good food while staying at the Yacht Club, there's plenty to choose from. The Ale and Compass serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a casual nautical atmosphere. Attached to the Ale and Compass is the Ale and Compass Lounge. This is a full-service cocktail lounge with specialty drinks and light bites. Yachtsman Steakhouse is the Yacht Club's premier restaurant, serving cuts of superbly aged beef as well as poultry and seafood selections. The Cruise Cup, located next to the Yachtsman Steakhouse, serves a multitude of beers along with your favorite drinks and wines. For a quick service meal, head to the market at Ale and Compass. So this lobby is a little smaller than the beach club it looks like. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's about the same. Uh, this one is uh, in darker colors, it's white and bluish gray and uh, very, very attractive. Hey Jen. Hey Woody. Are you in the mood for Christmas? Yes. Since it, it's not, since you're wearing Halloween stuff, you're I shopping am. for Christmas. I am in the mood for Christmas. Okay, just make it sure. Because in case you didn't see it, hey, there's there's Christmas stuff out right over here, <laughs> right over here. Oh look, it's Halloween. And Christmas. <laughs> Halloween. You know I'm here to stay every single day. Yeah. So hold me tight through the night. Mm -hmm. Disney booze. And Disney cigars. Hey, Jim. Hey, Woody. Hey, can I have a Disney cigar? No. It's, just, it's a it's a cigar. It wants, it wants me to smoke it. Mm -hmm. It's right there. You sure? Okay guys, we uh, we made it back from the Yacht and Beach Club. That was kind of cool. It's, we're now in Epcot. Actually, 
<laughs> we are. We're in a relaxation <laughs> zone, are. so these dudes can come off. <laughs> if you're not familiar, if this, if you haven't been keeping up, there are relaxation zones in each of the parks where you can go and you can take your mask off and breathe. As long as you stay socially distanced from the parties around you, and obviously you can see there's there's nobody around us right now, so yeah. I think we're safe. But the reason we came to Epcot is that there is a pop-up pass holder shop in the Germany Pavilion and World Showcase. Jen has been there, I have not, but there is some new merchandise that hit today. Yeah. And I think we both want to check that out. We're gonna head that direction. It looks it's a little cloudy, but I don't I don't think it's gonna rain. It's not supposed to rain until about seven o'clock. So when we get done here, we're gonna jump back on the Skyliner, go back over to Hollywood Studios where our car's parked and <laughs> call it a day. We actually, you know, that's something else we discussed on the way over here was is taking the Skyliner from Hollywood Studios to Epcot actually like plants you right in the middle of World Showcase. So if you're looking to be in the back of the park instead of the front of the park, it's actually a really good way to get here. just left Epcot, we're back in the Skyliner, heading back to Hollywood Studios to get to the car. We walked two resorts, we walked the entirety of Epcot, that was fun. We didn't really do much, went in the pass holder shop. Any day inside a Disney park is better than outside, right? <laughs> so, as always guys, if never lost, then never found. So go get lost.